Hello everyone. This is antenna I designed to receive RF signals. Its construction method is referred to as a magnetic loop antenna. In this case it is a tuned magnetic loop antenna because across the top of the primary loop I have included a capacitor which breaks the circuit and the two halves of the antenna at the top of the loop are only connected through the capacitor. So I'm going to take off this 3D printed bracket and show you that. You see that there's a non-conductive coupler in between the two halves of the antenna, an 8 gauge copper coming down and connecting these two halves through the capacitor. That is a vacuum variable capacitor. And I'll give you a closer look at that capacitor and talk a little bit more about that in just a second. Just want to give you a broad overview of the antenna and the primary components of it. So again, we have a primary loop here. This is a four inch aluminum rigid ducting is what that is made from. This is uh, pretty commonly available at home improvement stores. And the stuff is fairly low cost. It's a little bit more than a dollar a foot. So you have that primary loop. You have a, this capacitor here that has the two halves of this primary loop coupled. That is a 15 picofarad to 300 picofarad vacuum variable capacitor. And so that's the uh, primary loop capacitor, and down here you have the coupling loop, what is referred to as the coupling loop. It is a 3 8 outer diameter copper loop, which is not uh, physically contacting this loop right here. It is very, very close to this loop, but the radiation spreads from the big loop to the little one when receiving, and from the little loop to the big one when transmitting. So that's how that works. There's a 50 ohm coab. A uh, 50 ohm coax cable coming up in the center conductor connects to one half of this loop, so this one's also split at the top, just like the big one, and the shielding connects to that side. And of course this 50 ohm coax would connect to whatever receiver you might have. In my case, it's a HackRF transceiver, it's a USB enabled uh, transceiver that allows your CPU, or in some cases your GPU, to process that RF information. It's got about a 20 megahertz bandwidth. This antenna is, this antenna's design makes it highly directional. I'm going to tuck in this here and show you that now. So this antenna I put on a, um, a Lazy Susan, also I got that from the hardware store. And the reason why you would want an antenna like this to ro rotate is because it is highly directional, meaning you could point this directly at a transmission source, and not only would it make that source stronger, but any noise that might be in the environment which would drown that uh, transmission source out, you can null that out. So when you point this antenna directly at a transmission source, that is referred to as nulling. So I'm going to go ahead and hook up this antenna and show you the um, software that I'm using to process those signals. And I will, of course, in, before I do that, I'm going to give you a quick rundown on the uh, capacitor there and the uh, the uh, coupling loop just to give you a closer view, then I'll hook this up and show you this thing uh, receiving RF in real time. Alright, as promised, here's a closer look at the uh, vacuum variable capacitor. And I'm going to try to keep this in focus while I tune it so you can see how that works. So as I'm rotating uh, this uh, counterclockwise, as viewed from the bottom, the uh, the coil packs inside of this vacuum variable capacitor are closing, and that would be increasing the contact resistance. I'm sorry, I said that wrong. That's not increasing. That's increasing the capacitance. And as I rotate it in the other direction, it's going to back that off, and it's going to open that up. As those get further apart, the uh, capacitance is is reducing, and the vacuum uh, tube here uh, has a better dielectric constant than just plain old air. So it's a this is going to perform better than a butterfly capacitor would in a smaller amount of space. You could achieve this same performance by um, paying careful attention to the distance between the plates if you were going to build or buy a butterfly capacitor which are generally cheaper than these vacuum variable capacitors but uh, this one can handle a lot more voltage and oftentimes can have more capacitance in, uh, than its butterfly capacitor counterparts due to the fact that it is in a vacuum and this down here is the uh, 
coupling loop and as I mentioned uh, earlier you can see right there that the top half of that is also split like the primary loop and you have the center conductor coming out of that coax there and being soldered on to the left side and then you have the uh, shielding from the coax going off to the right and clamping over to that and a little bit of wood in the middle to keep those two sides from touching and that coax just comes down through the 3D printed part there and trails off to go be plugged into the uh, into the um, Hack RF, which will be connected to the uh, PC over here and then I'm about to switch over to the computer screen and give you a live demonstration of the antenna receiving some RF signals all right, I've got the antenna hooked up through the 50 ohm coax cable um, with an SMA adapter plugged into the Hack RF. The Hack RF is connected to the PC through USB, and I've got a few interesting things uh, saved off in favorites here. That it's basically just saving the frequency and the bandwidth for this uh, application. It's a software defined radio. This one is called SDR Console, uh, and it processes the uh, raw data that's being passed in from the um, transceiver, the USB transceiver. Now the first one I found here is an automated message that continually repeats and this one's very useful to demonstrate that my antenna is working because I don't have to wait for somebody to press the uh, push to talk button and transmit from the radio. Like an amateur radio, they don't transmit continuously. You know, they're going to be on there at certain times of the day chatting and, and that sort of thing. So I'd have to get lucky and catch him at just the right time for the demonstration here. So I found an automated message that is a voice, and I'm about to turn that on and, and, and let you hear that. And I found some other curious and interesting messages that I'll, I'll show as well. Okay, so here it is. Turn it on. ILF one way to do approaching you. And it's not uh, perfectly tuned to the center frequency there, so I'm going to kind of get that right on and centered. Open that bandwidth up a little bit. And Contact Shannon Ground for weather. ILF one way to do approaching you. Restricted areas 5104 and 5105 are inactive. Contact Shannon Ground for weather. And I don't, I don't know if you can hear that automated message, but it's, it's saying contact cannon ground for weather and there's a warning about a restricted area there. So it's kind of an airspace automated message there. So something related to air traffic control. And I'll turn that up once more to let you hear the voice. It's coming in nice and clear. ILF one way to approach the news. Restricted area 5104 and 5105 are inactive. Contact cannon ground for weather. ILF one way to approach and use restricted area 5104 and 5105. All right, and then I want to show you something else I saved off here that I'm not real sure what it is. ILF one way. It's just a repeating tone. And another interesting thing, I just want to show you how much noise comes into the signal if you open up the bandwidth. You get a lot of noise, but if you uh, grab that bandwidth down over here, I'm in the left hand side of the screen here and if you bring that bandwidth in you can dial it right in on that um, frequency and it cuts out a lot of that noise and um, I'm gonna go and show you that the software can control um, two types of amplifiers it's got a low noise amplifier and a uh, variable gain amplifier and if your um, if the amplitude is too high here, you might get a little bit of distortion, so you can actually bring that down just a little bit. And now those, if you're looking down here in the uh, signal history here, you can see that this is a repeating tone. It's got one and then one, two, three. Um, now I can only speculate what this is, I don't know, but it's probably some sort of beacon, just a repeating beacon, also related to air traffic control um, for navigation or something like that. Um, when I get a chance, I'll try to ask somebody who knows something about air traffic control and they might be able to tell me exactly what the purpose of this repeating tone is. But I found this tone at 138 megahertz, and it's, it's a very specific frequency here. Um, Unlike what you tend to find on FM radios, you know, they're rounded off real nice at 101.5 or something like that. But you'll see this frequency here, its center frequency is very specific. And I got that bandwidth really tightened up. I think it's 
it's like below 50 hertz here. It's around 50 hertz, so really, really tight bandwidth there. Um, and what's neat in this waterfall cascade, it's pretty zoomed out here, so you can't see it too well right here. But if you look over here on the left, you can see the fundamental frequencies of, of this uh, transmission. You can see you can see it on the on the lower side band there, and you can see it on the upper side. It's kind of neat. It's it's um it's right on the center one here, but you can kind of see that, and it gets really weak. The further away you get from that uh, first harmonic, it starts to get really weak until you can't even see it anymore. Um, and that's really cool because we we talked about that in the courses, and it's really neat to see that uh, on a live feed. And um, so that was one of the other interesting things I found. I, ha I mentioned a second ago when I was showing you the antenna that I found a station that transmits from a thousand miles away in uh, Tennessee. Um, it's some old timer preaching the gospel or something like that. You know, he's just using a, he's got some sort of amateur radio equipment and he's broadcasting, but it doesn't come through very clearly in the daytime. Um, when the sun's up and, and when the sun's bright, you can barely hear it no matter which direction I point the antenna or tune it. Uh, or mess with the uh, the um, the uh, gain on these amplifiers, you can barely hear it in the daytime. So what I'm going to try to do is get a recording of that tonight when it comes in nice and clear, and then I'll add that on to the uh, to the video as well. And um, it kind of does take time to browse through the RF spectrum and find uh, interesting things to listen to. Um, so I only had a few saved off for you here for the demonstration. Um, mainly this that restricted um, area message, and then the uh, here's a data signal right here. Uh, I don't know how to demodulate that. I'm going to turn the volume down because you're not going to be able to hear much from that. It might be digital voice, so I'm kind of looking into how I can get a plug-in for this software to demodulate this digital voice signal, but I found this one at um, 386 megahertz, 386, 698. And I, again, I don't have a way to demodulate that, so I can't really tell you what the contents of that signal is, but, but I found it and got the amplifier values set to where it, it picks it up nice and clear, so that, that was kind of an interesting thing. And of course, there's um, ways to find the uh, police and radio frequencies as well. Uh, those are using, the ones for Clovis are using a um, modulation called NXDN. See, that one's transmitting now. But it doesn't continuously transmit. This one will, um, it'll come on and off, and it, and it does not always stay on. So as long as somebody's got a radio keyed, it's setting here transmitting this right here. Uh, but I think it's a digital voice signal, so it's not just a simple uh, amplitude modulation or frequency modulation. There's something else going on in there, some sort of digital modulation. So once I figure out how to de decrypt that, that'll be pretty fun to listen to those. Um, and if you know you've got the exact frequency, you can sometimes punch these in on Google and you'll find a radio reference that tells you, oh, hey, this is uh, public safety or that's the fire department. And um, they're transmitting at that and uh, I picked up one uh, the other night from several counties away uh, let's see if I can get this uh, here's here's kind of a radio frequency reference here and these don't continually transmit you know they only transmit when they need to be talking so you really just got to be looking at the right time uh, you got to be looking at the right frequency at the right time to actually catch somebody talking but I caught somebody, let's see, we're here in Curry County, or at least I am. Uh, some of you guys might be over in, in Roosevelt. But I caught somebody from up in Mora County transmitting the other night um, on FM. And it was at 155.55 megahertz, and it was the uh, Mora, Mora County Sheriff. And they were transmitting on there and talking, and it actually came in pretty clear. Uh, but this is a neat little website called radioreference.com, and they help you find uh, frequencies to tune into and listen to. Otherwise, it does take very long to just kind of scan and try to find something interesting. And you're basically looking for uh, signal peaks when you're doing that. Like right here, you see the noise. It's got a lot of noise, of course. There's a lot of RF noise in the environment. And, but when you see those tall peaks, you know that's a transmission of some kind. Something interesting is going on where those uh, signal peaks are. And if, you, if the signal's strong enough and if you know how to demodulate it, you can pick up something really interesting. 
So, so far, once I've got the antenna put together and I tune the capacitor, I can actually, uh, I can actually get those noise peaks to kind of come up a little bit. And so, without just using the software-based um, low noise amplifier and vari variable gain amplifier here, there's a way to actually increase the efficiency of the antenna. And of course, the, the most effective thing I've found is rotating the antenna. And when you're trying to eliminate inference, they call that nulling. So you can turn the antenna uh, to null it and increase the uh, strength of these, of these signals. So this part's been very fun, and that's just a quick demonstration of it working. So um, now that I kind of showed you the antenna completed, uh, hooked it up, and show you it interfacing with a computer here to process the raw RF, um, I want to show you how it was made. And um, I'm just going to kind of go through and show you from start to finish uh, an enjoyable little time lapse here, a lot of footage and a lot of editing, so I hope you enjoy it. Uh, thank you very much for checking out my project, and it's, it's been a lot of fun, and I learned a lot about working with RF and uh, calculating antenna sizes and um, the different types of antennas you can build out there was a very fun topic to research as well. Mine is one of thousands of different types of antennas out there for receiving different types of frequencies. Mine seems to be most effective from the 80 meter to the 20 meter uh, band and so if you're looking at that it's about 3.5 megahertz all the way down to around 14 megahertz it picks up really clear in there although um, I was able to pick up some data I didn't know how to demodulate it but I was able to pick up a little data right up around in you know 400 and some uh, megahertz and uh, right now this um, data signal that I was showing you a moment ago is up here at 392 megahertz so it's, it's a very good multi-purpose antenna uh, because it has that tuning capacitor you can uh, and you can rotate it you can really uh, if you point directly at a signal, even if it's far away, it's amazing. It comes in really clear, and the uh, and the capacitor um, seems to help bring those noise peaks up a little bit. And if I was transmitting that that capacitor, because it's a tuned magnetic loop antenna, if I was transmitting, I could really um, get a lot of use out of that var variable vacuum capacitor, because I could get the efficiency uh, of the antenna perfectly dialed in to the frequency that I want to transmit at. So that, that was a really neat neat thing to add on to the antenna and I think it'll be pretty useful. Um, so without further ado, I'm gonna get into the build uh, and start showing you guys how this thing was made. And then if I get that uh, station picked up again tonight from Tennessee, it was about a thousand miles away. It was one of the first far away things that I found uh, that's interesting. I will add that on to the end of the, end of the video and, and you can hear the old timer who's uh, just an amateur broadcaster it seems like um, you know talking about what he knows and everything so alright guys enjoy alright I'm gonna go over the uh, materials that I've gathered for the build on this antenna uh, the total cost uh, including the lumber and the things from the hardware store was approximately sixty dollars so you could build one of these for less if you were even more careful than I was when selecting materials. I did try to pick things that were kind of cheap because I want to show how easy it is to make a, a magnetic loop antenna. Uh, there are certainly much cheaper materials than you can make it out of than, than I have. But I'm going, to go, I'm going to dig through these and show you what I got here. And I will include prices and kind of like product information uh, in the description and the links below. So this was some of the cheaper uh, copper tubing that was available. Uh, I got this from Lowe's. This is 3 8 uh, copper tubing, and I think the length on that is 5 feet. So it's 3 8 outer diameter by uh, 5 feet copper tubing here. So this is going to be the uh, coupling uh, loop of the antenna. And what I've got for the, uh, the main loop here is a uh, rigid uh, duct. Uh, this is essentially dryer vent hose or attic vent hose and each one of these is an eight foot section so they're going to be um, they will have continuity at the base of the uh, loop of the antenna and I'll stretch these out on video and then form a loop and so they're going to be coupled here at the bottom and then there's going to be the gap in the tuning capacitor at the top so these are the uh, metals that are going to form uh, the two loops in this magnetic loop antenna uh, these are the, uh, this is the coupler for the bottom, just standard hose clamps here. And then once I've got all that hooked up, I'm going to see what the DC resistance is of this loop, just to see how high the contact resistance is going to be between these um, rigid 
uh, vent hose here and the clamps, this right here, it's all aluminum. The clamp is aluminum. The uh, hose clamps I do not think are aluminum. I think they're like galvanized uh, tin. But uh, since this is aluminum, that is, plus that clamping pretty tightly to it, I'm hoping to keep that DC resistance as low as possible. So I might do some things to uh, lower that DC resistance if I have to, where these two couple at the bottom. All of these I 3D printed. These are just brackets. Uh, you didn't have to 3D print these. You could have used large zip ties. Uh, there's a lot of things you could have done to fix the uh, two loops of the antenna to a frame to support it. But since I had a 3D printer and I was uh, enjoying 3D modeling stuff, I went ahead and made uh, a series of clamps here and just designed it all from scratch to go with that. And some uh, spacer blocks to get it all really nice, flat, and round. And I'm going to use a paper template as well with the, to uh, lay out the antennas and get the circles as perfect as I can. That was one of the larger 3D prints I've ever done here for the uh, smaller loop is going to go on that right there and that's going to bolt on to the backboard and then my coax uh, 50 ohm coax cable is going to come up through here and uh, terminate on that loop there. So these have to be cleaned up. I'm going to do that on camera at high speed. So I still got uh, post process these uh, 3D prints here. Uh, this is my RG6 coax cable. I think it's 50 ohm although they don't list it so I'll just have to check that. And then here's a the rest of the miscellaneous hardware that's just going to really help assemble and, and put this thing together. I've got that right here. It's pretty thick. I think this is, uh, I want to say that was 16 or 18 gauge copper. That's going to um, go from the top of the uh, loop here down to the uh, tuning capacitor and I wanted to keep that resistance as low as possible so I went with solid core and one of the larger gauges uh, available at the uh, local hardware store. Grabbed a few extra clamps here for uh, coupling at the uh, top of the loop when I get to that point. Not for me, that, that I think is for the kids. Then these brackets here are just going to help uh, keep the uh, base of the antenna um, it's one of the cheaper way to buy it, it's construction grade brackets, just to keep my upright uh, fixed down to a board at the bottom there. And that's it. Uh, not counting the uh, things I threw to the side there, the total was $64, uh, not including 3D prints. So if you take off that, we were definitely under, yeah, we were definitely under $60 on bill of materials for this antenna build. So I'm going to get started laying all the pieces out and putting everything together, clean up those 3D prints, and we'll move on to the next step. Alright, so I've finished uh, cleaning up all the 3D prints and I just want to show you what all those were. Uh, these are all in the CAD file here. I did uh, the brackets entirely printed and included some, uh, just some little keeper pins here, if you will, that are actually uh, 3D printed as well. 
had to clean those up with a uh, tap and die. Uh, my printer's in, in need of a little TLC right now, but it got the job done. And uh, so these are the four uh, clamps that are going to hold on the uh, rigid duct around the frame. And so they uh, just kind of squeeze together like this. It's a little tight right now. And they uh, kind of hooks in on one side, swings over, uh, locks in there, and then these guys go in there. So it's kind of an all plastic solution. I uh, wanted to use minimal metal on the build other than the two magnetic loops. Uh, and so I got four of these brackets here done, my two spacer blocks cleaned up, and the uh, large coupling loop uh, bracket that will be holding that on there, plus it's hardware that's going to mount to the frame. So now that these are cleaned up, I'm going to move on to the uh, whatever's next.
Alright guys, it's a new, get, new day and now that the antenna is put together I'm going to uh, finish up some of the smaller pieces that have to be installed on it. Uh, so the coupling loop here is going to be made of 3 8 outer diameter cover. Open that up and show you here. And uh, this is what I got, is about $5 worth of copper and I'm going to be using the section from about right here to right here because the outer loop here is going to be closest to the um, size that my coupling loop is supposed to be. It's supposed to be about one-fifth of the diameter of the um, uh, big loop there. Uh, so I'm going to have to trim that down, cut it, and fit it. This is going to be installed in this bracket right here. So this bracket right here was 3D printed. Uh, and I'm going, this, it's got holes in the four corners here and the loop is essentially going to be stretched out to size so that it fits uh, right here in this loop. And this loop was designed to hold, uh, or this bracket was designed to hold a loop that's exactly the size of one-fifth of the primary one. So once I get it all stretched out and formed to the proper size, I'll um, route it through here. And the coax goes up through here. So that'll be uh, trimmed off. Uh, one of the ends will be clipped off and stripped back because the inside of the shielding and the center conductor inside of this 50 ohm coax is going to be soldered on to this uh, copper right here. So what I'll do is take off one of the, lop off one of these ends and I'll leave as much length on this as I can here. So that way the antenna uh, and my receiver can be as far apart as I can get out of this here. But I'll be uh, cutting that off, stripping it back to expose the shielding and the center conductor. And that will, uh, once it's cut off, will wrap right up through here. And um, they will be uh, soldered on using uh, some soldering paste and a, and a torch here, just because this is going to be a massive heat sink and I wouldn't be able to get it quite hot enough with just a soldering iron in order to actually get that solder to flow really nicely. So um, the tricky part is going to be the, uh, shielding the heat from this because I'm going to use this to hold it all in place while I do that soldering. So I might melt the plastic just a little bit, but I'm going to use some aluminum foil as a shield to try to you know ward off as much of that heat as I can. And I'm going to try to solder quickly um, so I don't have excessive dwell time and melt this plastic. But um, I'm going to use this jig to actually get everything put together and then I will, ins once it's all put together, then I will install it back onto the base of the uh, primary loop over there. Uh, and then of course at the top, I have 3D printed a um, non-conductive uh, coupler uh, because the top of the loop, uh, just like the uh, simplified circuit shows, uh, the top of the loop is not actually connected. So the top of the loop up there is going to get cut. I'm going to slip in this non-conductive coupler there and um, this will be on the inside of the uh, rigid ducting there and so the rigid ducting will go outside of that and I will use some hose clamps and some I think this was 8 gauge copper. I'll be using that to uh, couple uh, the, the primary loop down to the capacitor uh, and I'm going to show you what I finally decided to go with for the capacitor. This is a um, used uh, capacitor here that I bought on eBay. Got it for a very good deal. Uh, it's a vacuum variable capacitor. Um, they still make these for HF um, applications. Uh, they're very expensive. Uh, the newer ones these days are very expensive, $500 and upwards. Uh, this one was a used one from an, uh, pulled from probably an antenna of some kind or some other type of high-frequency um, application. And uh, it spins right here. You can see that the previous person probably had a motor of some kind or maybe a knob uh, connected to this to do the uh, tuning. Uh, so this will be mounting right up uh, on the... It'll be mounting right up here at the top, and that's what I said that this 8-gauge uh, copper will go up and connect the where my primary loop splits. It'll connect it to the two um, terminals uh, on this 
vacuum variable capacitor and I got this one for a very good deal. It was under $50 and even the used ones in varying uh, conditions go for two to three hundred dollars. So I got very lucky on that and the person who sold it to me uh, shipped it very well packed with lots of extra styrofoam there so that it didn't get busted uh, in transit. And I used an LCR meter uh, to test it and it goes all the way down to about four to five picofarad and all the way up to about 315 uh, picofarad and it's rated from zero to 300 picofarad. This is a Jennings UCS 300. So it's a 300 uh, vacuum, 300 picofarad vacuum variable capacitor. And that's what I'm going to use to tune the antenna to give me that high selectivity on the front end. So this has to be installed um, on the antenna. And then of course I've got to actually connect the where I split the antenna at the top to the two connections on that capacitor using some nice thick copper. Uh, probably won't be soldering that. I'm going to try just compression fits first to see if I still get a really good low resistance connection that way uh, because soldering to this rigid duct, it's very thin. I'll probably destroy it if I try that. So I'm going to try without any soldering first. If I have to, uh, at some point, I may try to use some silver paste or something to get that um, contact resistance lowered down. So that has to be installed uh, to get the uh, capacitor connected to the uh, top of the loop there. And of course my coupling loop has to be properly uh, reshaped and formed here to get that exact, as, as perfect as I can, one-fifth of the diameter of the uh, primary loop there behind me. And I'll install that on here and then connect the coax to it. So once I get all those things done, the antenna is going to be done. Um, I've also got some uh, SMA to coax adapters uh, floating around here somewhere so that I can connect this antenna up to the Hack RF and start seeing what I can receive um, with this antenna build. So I'm going to go ahead and get back into it and uh, speed up the video for you here and show you what I'm working on.
find the act is all right as i promised um it is now nighttime and the signal that i was getting from about a thousand miles away it is um it turns out it is a broadcast radio station they have a fairly high power transmitter they're from um, let's see, it was the call sign for the station was WWCR2, and I think I found uh, they have a website and everything, but what's, they have the frequencies listed here on Wikipedia. And it is at 5.935 megahertz, and I don't remember their broadcast power, but it was a very powerful station. They are um, out of Nashville, Tennessee, and they have a couple of repeaters. But I want to show you the, uh, I'm going to turn that on so you can listen to that just real briefly to show you that I did pick up a signal I from fairly far away. As God's failed faith plan for the creation of man, that he would be the lamb slain from the foundation and there of the you, world. And there you have it. So the signal's coming in at about um, 86 dBm there. The and uh, as I turn the come. antenna, uh, you can see that the signal strength the is dropping and getting getting a lot weaker and you can't even hear it there so I've rotated the antenna about 90 and degrees here and now it's coming in children by Jesus Christ who actually himself, strong enough to pick up that signal good so just wanted to show you that will. thanks for watching Not my for video I uh, really appreciate it and I hope you enjoyed watching the build and seeing the uh, this type of antenna um, work with the hack RF uh, for software to find radio all right thanks bye